From the first generation of missiles to the modern era, I'm going to be ranking every heat-seeking missile that we already have in War Thunder. This video is going to be timestamped and organized by nation, so if you want to skip around to whichever nation you play, or just want to find your favorite missiles, feel free to skip around. Before we get into things though, just some disclaimers, you gotta do them for a video like this. First of all, these missiles are being compared against each other, rather than the battle ratings that they sit at. The AIM-9B at 8.0 performs very differently from the AIM-9B at 10.7, so it just makes it a lot easier to compare them against each other. Plus, I want this to be a little bit of a guide so that when people unlock missiles, they know which ones to use. Second of all, um, if I don't sound great, it's because I've been battling with COVID for the past three weeks. I'm doing a lot better now, but, you know, fun times. Anyway, let's get right into it. The first missile on our list is the AIM-9B, and if you've ever used this missile before, you know that this is going to go into the F tier. This is very much a beginner missile. It only has 10 Gs of pull, which means that most planes can just simply outturn the missile. And it has a cage seeker, meaning it can only look straight forward while it's still on the rail. It also has a considerably large field of view, meaning that any flares at all are gonna make this thing lose target basically instantly. The AIM-9D is the next missile on our list, and it is a much needed improvement over the AIM-9B. The biggest improvement is that it can now pull 18 Gs, which means that people can't just outturn the missile anymore. On top of that, throw in about twice the range with the extra burn time and you have yourself a pretty good missile. Unfortunately, it isn't very versatile because it still sports the Cage Seeker, but the fact that it's actually usable against targets who aren't blind and flying in a straight line is a huge improvement. The AIM-9E is the first improvement over the 9B that the Air Force made, and it isn't really much. The Seeker is ever so slightly more resistant to flares, but it rarely ever comes up where that matters. It does, however, gain access to an uncaged Seeker, meaning you can point it around and lead it while it's still on the rails. Even though it's still 10 Gs of pole, which isn't much, the extra little bit of lead can be the difference between hitting a shot or watching the missile just fly past the target. Remember how I said basically the only weakness of the AM-9D was that it had a caged seeker? Well, the AM-9G takes that and just throws it out the window. You can now basically lead this thing anywhere. The limit to which you can lead it is massive. Just this one improvement on its own is enough to boost it all the way up to B tier. The AM-9H is basically identical to the AM-9G. I've heard it has a higher track rate, but I really have no clue what that means in War Thunder. I just know that bigger number is better for that stat, so it gets to go above the AIM-9G. The AIM-9J is the last missile that the Air Force made on its own, and it takes the AIM-9E, doubles the amount of pole, and gives it a massive gimbal limit, which makes it a lot better than the AIM-9E. Still, it's relatively lacking in range, like something you would find on the AIM-9G, so it's gonna sit a little bit below it. We're finally getting to the good US missiles. The AIM-9L takes the long burning motor off of the AIM-9G and throws it onto a missile that can turn 30 Gs and is all aspect. Unfortunately, it still really likes to eat flares, but other than that, this missile doesn't really have a weakness. I feel very comfortable putting it in the A tier. Now, with the AIM-9M, you take that same missile and now you throw IRCCM on it, meaning that it doesn't like to eat flares anymore. It also has the smokeless motor, which makes it a lot less noticeable when it's flying towards you. This is easily one of the best missiles in the game, I'm going to be putting it in S tier. Now, you would think the AIM-9P would be an improvement on the AIM-9M based on how the alphabet works, but unfortunately, it's just a modified AIM-9J. The only thing it holds over it is radar slaving, but ever since they buffed the gimbal limit on the AIM-9J and AIM-9P, I actually think this radar slaving ability is very important for the missile. It definitely helps you pull off crazier shots that you wouldn't normally be able to do as this missile is only 20 Gs, which is good, but it isn't the greatest ever. The Germans only made one missile, at least what we have in game, which is the AIM-9B FGW-2. This missile is only found on the F-104G, and the F-104G can take AIM-9Js, so you never see anybody use this missile. All it is, is an AIM-9B that has the flare resistance of the AIM-9E. I guess it's something, but it's still going in the F tier. The first Russian missile we have is the R-3S, which is just a reverse engineered AIM-9B. It is actually ever so slightly different from the AIM-9B. I looked at the stats, and it has like 
2% less weight than the M9B, so I guess it gets to go above it. The R-13M1 is a lot more interesting of a missile and is basically just a Russian AIM-9E but with 10 more G of pull. It still has a relatively small gimbal limit, but it actually has a little bit more range than the AIM-9J, which makes it a little bit better in my opinion. The R-60 is the first we see of the Russian dogfight missiles. It has 30 Gs of pull which is phenomenal, but the motor on it burns for an incredibly short amount of time, which is a little bit underwhelming. This means that, effectively, it only has around 1.5 to maybe 2 kilometers at most in terms of range. It's very good if you can get really up close to somebody directly behind them, but if your plane has a gun, I mean you're probably already winning that situation. For a rear aspect missile, you probably want something with a bit more range. The R60M fixes the R60 problem by just making it all aspect. Instead of having to worry about pulling around somebody, you can just slam these in people's faces at 1km in full head-ons. It pulls immediately off the rails, so there's a good chance that they don't react in time and just get hit in the face with it. Still, you do suffer from some range problems, so despite being all aspect, it's still not one of the best missiles really. Oh boy, the R-73 is really crazy. It's a thrust vectoring missile, meaning it basically has access to the full 40 Gs of pole immediately off the rail. Combine this with what I think is the best IRCCM in the game, and around 3 kilometers range, and you have for probably the most oppressive missile in the game. To me, this has got to be the number one S tier. Moving on to the long range Soviet missiles, the first generation is the R-23T. It's not really anything to write home about, it has a really hard accelerating motor, but unfortunately it doesn't have access to its full range of maneuverability until later on in its flight, meaning that it's really easy to just shoot this missile past people and not have it hit anything. Still, it's all aspect and with 20 Gs of pull, it's good enough, so it makes a cozy home in the C tier with the other missiles that are almost really good. The second generation of these long range missiles is the R24T. It has 24 Gs of pull, which is fitting for the name, but more importantly, it doesn't send itself off into the horizon immediately off the rail, and one thing that is key to mention with these missiles is that they glide incredibly far because they have a lot of momentum behind them. I mean, this thing is the size of a telephone pole. I can't count the number of times there's been just a MiG-23 in space that beams me with an R24 from like, 6 kilometers away. While it isn't a 30G missile, 24 is still pretty good, and the incredible range of it really puts it up on the charts. Ironically, the R-27T, the third generation of the Soviet heavy missiles, actually has less range than the R-24. However, it does trade that for 6 more G of pull, which rounds it out to 30. But more importantly, it has IRCCM in its seeker, meaning it's just going to ignore flares. It also has comparable range to the AIM-9L and the AIM-9M. It's a fairly decent missile, the only problem that it has is that it's significantly outclassed by its next variant. The R-27ET is a much better and very goofy missile. Just take the heavy R-27T and slap on it a motor that lets it reach all the way out to like 8 kilometers in a supersonic tail chase. And if somebody isn't flying away from you, I mean, I've gotten like 18 kilometer kills with these missiles. The range is just absolutely insane for a missile that has no warning that it's approaching you. I easily think this is the second best missile in the game, which is pretty scary considering that we have multiple planes that can also carry this with the R-73. Brits, I'm sorry, I'm gonna speedrun your missiles. The Fire Streak has got to be like the worst range missile that I have ever seen. And that's funny considering the SRAM is in this same list of British missiles. It has 15G of pull, which is like good for a beginner missile, especially considering it's uncaged. But boy does it not like to move once it gets off the rails. You can just tell this missile was exclusively made to hit bombers and not really much else. Unfortunately the red top is basically the same as the fire streak. It's big and heavy and the motor isn't great, but at least it improves upon the fire streak, so it gets to bump up a tier. 
Finally, we have the SRAM. Congratulations to Britain for not making a single missile that we have in War Thunder that can go past 2 kilometers. The big benefit of the SRAM is that it actually has some decent all aspect capabilities. Combine that with the fact that the SRAM basically just has an unlimited amount of pull and you can shotgun people in close range with these. Unfortunately though, it is basically unusable if somebody is flying away from you, so... Good job, Britain, you made the most forgettable missiles in the game. Japan has one missile of their own, and it's actually pretty good. It's very comparable to the AIM-9M, however, it has less drag due to an improved fin design, and it also pulls 10 more Gs, so you can hit targets a little bit easier. Just some quality of life changes that makes it a little bit better of a missile, but it isn't anything so crazy that I would move it up above missiles that the 9M doesn't beat. The PL-5B is probably the best rear aspect missile in the game. It has comparable range to that of the AIM-9G, but instead of having a slow, long burn where you can see the missile diamond the whole time or the smoke trail the whole time, instead you get a very short but hard burning missile, meaning a lot of times you can take people by surprise with it. And now take the best rear aspect missile in the game, give it an all aspect seeker, and it wasn't as much of an improvement as I was hoping for. It has a very limited all aspect seeker compared to other all aspect missiles, which is really disappointing, but it's still an improvement nonetheless, so it gets to bump up a tier. The R530E is one of my favorite missiles to use in the game, even though it isn't very great. It's somewhat similar to something like a red top, but instead of having no range at all, Instead it has a really long burning motor, and lets it almost dogfight an opponent you shoot it at. Still, it doesn't change the fact that this missile is very big and heavy and doesn't have a very great G-pull, but it's still a bit more usable compared to other missiles that are somewhat similar to it. I have some unfortunate news for the France lovers out there, I don't have a very high opinion of the magics. 35G of pull is very good, and the motor it has is very strong for the amount of time that it's burning. Unfortunately though, the dead time that it has where it just doesn't pull off of the rail really hurts its dogfight capabilities. And the drag on it is worse than an R60, so the moment that it stops burning, it's basically dead in the air. That being said, it's still a pretty good missile. You can only hate on 35Gs of pull so much. The Magic 2 improves on the Magic 1 the same way the R60M improves on the base R60. The All Aspect Seeker makes the missile a lot more versatile, but more importantly, it also has IRCCM in the same way that the R73 does. So while it may not be as good as the R73 at using that IRCCM, it is still incredibly useful. Finally, Israel has three missiles to call their own. The Shafrir is a missile that is very similar to the AIM-9B. However, it does gain a mind-blowing extra 1G of pull. I know, it is so good now. Surely this fixes all of the problems the AIM-9B has. As you can guess, it's also going all the way down to the bottom. The Shafrir 2 is a weird missile, as it gets 18G of pull in an uncaged seeker. However, it does still have a relatively weak motor, so it's not phenomenal by any means, but it is still capable of hitting shots where people aren't going to be able to outturn the missile, which is a very good trait to have for a missile of this caliber. And last but not least, we have the Python 3. For a missile that doesn't have IRCCM, this is the best missile you're gonna get. The 40G of pull on it is very good, and it combos really well with the fact that this missile has basically unlimited thrust. I've sent this thing out like 6 kilometers, which for a short range IR missile, is a lot. Still, without IRCCM, that's 40G's pulled straight into a flare if it sees one. So I can't comfortably put it in the S tier, but this is easily the best A tier. Well, that's the end of the tier list. I hope it's somewhat agreeable, or if you hate it, you can go to the comments and tell me how terrible it is and that I have bad opinions. Whatever. If you want to make one of your own, I'm going to leave a link to this same tier list in the description of this video. Other than that, I'm going to see you guys next time. Bye bye